My name is Peter Parker. I'm pretty sure you know the rest. I saved the city, fell in love, then I saved the city again and again and again. Look, I'm a comic book, a serial, I did a Christmas album, and a so-so popsicle. But this isn't about me. Not anymore. Gentlemen, when you had the concept of creating the idea of a, you know, walking into a comic book, did you have any idea how painstaking it would be to <laughs> make it happen? We no. wouldn't have done this if we thought it was this hard. You yeah, know, we were, it was a really exciting opportunity, right, to say like, oh, we could use animation to make a movie feel like you are inside the pages of a comic book and, and each frame could feel like a painting. And uh, our first call was to the production designer we've worked with in the past, Justin Thompson, and we got him excited and and then the, the VFX supervisor excited and everyone was like, this is gonna be really cool, we have no idea how to do it. And it took over a year of developing software and techniques and ma ma matching CG animation with 2D hand-drawn animation uh, all together before we found something. I was like, yes, this feels like even better than we thought it could be. Um, and so everyone was really uh, pumped to, to try it, but nobody knew how to do it. So a second on camera, or a second on screen, is, is a week of work for an artist. Have you any other mind-boggling stats like that? <laughs> um, we had, well, we were going to give a mm -hmm. thank you to the crew. Uh, many of whom are in Vancouver, so we were recording a video message for them and we asked for an alphabetized crew list because we were going to sing all of their names in the <laughs> to the tune of the Amazing Spider-Man theme. Uh, and then we got this phone book and we said, <laughs> how many people are in here? And it was a thousand. <laughs> a thousand names. And there were 160 animators, which is by far the most animation animators on any single movie just because of how slow and laborious this process we was. We broke our own record. Yeah. How many? 160 separate people. How does it work? In terms of you, you come up, you come with the two guys with the script, okay? Yeah. They show you what they can do. How much does that influence the script and vice versa? It was yeah, a, definitely a fluid process. It was a very ambitious script. And I have to say, the, the movie, although every single detail changed, the ambition of the movie didn't. But... We don't seem to be satisfied unless we're doing something crazy. Mm -hmm. And impossible. And yes. impossible, yes. and where we might mess up and be and embarrassed. And certainly the end of the movie with the big collider battle was, you know, it, it was where the movie gets its craziest. And it was a really hard thing to visualize until it was finished because, you know, it, it, the space is so abstract, but we were trying to keep track of what the, the relationships between the characters were and the goals uh, and the geography in a world that's constantly changing and in, in, a, in a somewhat psychedelic way. <laughs> so it was really hard uh, to, to know that if it was going to be uh, understandable or not until the very last second. Spider-Man swings in once a day, zip zaps up in his little mask and answers to no one. I love you, moms. Yeah, I know that. You, you gotta, gotta say I love you back. Dad, are you serious? Miles Morales, uh, uh, is biracial, which is mm -hmm. a fantastic uh, th thing to see. Was that part of the attraction for, for you guys? Yeah, we yeah. certainly want to make movies where um, it, they, they, they represent the world that we all live in. Uh, I personally grew up in a bilingual household, so that was really fun for there to be Spanish on screen and there's not translation, it's just part of the fabric of life. I don't want it to be remarkable, but I do think it's special that the, that the that the film is so diverse and, and I, I think it's on point that there's so many different ways to interpret this character and so many different kinds of people that could be behind that mask. My name is Miles Morales. <laughs> I'm the one and only Spider-Man. At least that's what I thought. You ever hear of the Super Collider? You're gonna love this. Dimension opening now. You're like me. That's impossible. My favorite uh, character in the movie is uh, Spider-Noir. Yeah, uh, Nick, Nick Cage as He's, a Chandler-esque yes, Spider-Man from, from the 30s. But gentlemen, Nick, Nick Cage is a Superman kind of guy. His, yeah. his son is called Cal. Yeah. Uh, I mean, did you have any problems taking part in the Spider-Man movie? Oh, no. He was he was so willing and, and excited to, to do it. And, and he gives such a funny performance. He was really channeling Bogart. He, he was like, I'm going to do a Bogart, uh, at Bogart style. And, uh, and Cagney and, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. And it, we just had a lot of fun coming up with 
30s and 30s sounding terms to, to put in his mouth. And sometimes it was just a little bit of like, what could what would be fun to get Nick Cage to say? <laughs> Kid. Listen up. This fry is your universe. It's soggy, it's weird, it's gross. And this delicious normal fry is my universe. So you want to learn to be Spider-Man. Can you teach me? Yes, I can. Time to swing. Ah, Good, doing you're doing it. it. Double tap to release and whip it out again. Okay. Whip and release. You're a natural. Whip. Whip. Ah. Whip. Hey, guys. Who are you? I'm Gwen Stacy. How many more spider people are there? Hey, fellas. Hello. This could literally not get any weirder. It can get weirder. This is a movie which is littered with Easter eggs. Can you, are you, would you care to give us one uh, today? The movie is in a, a, an alternate dimension, so mm -hmm. it's um, um, constantly reminding you with all the signage and, and little details that this isn't the world that we live in, but it's an alternate world where, where the Yugo is still a popular car. There was a show we made called Clone High way back in the day, and in this universe, it is uh, it has a sequel called Clone College. Like Griffin plays... Baseball. Baseball. Steph Curry is a famous golfer in this universe. Um, and and then there's, of course, all sorts of, like, comic fan Easter eggs for, for, for the super fans that are... There's so many of them that, yeah, that I don't the, know that... The Easter egg eggs hatched, <laughs> and then created a whole the new hatchlings, egg. like, went all over the movie. And created their own Easter eggs. And then laid their own eggs. We need to get back to our universes soon. Brooklyn is going to collapse. My family lives in Brooklyn. Whoa, 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 whoa. Miles, what's wrong? This was never your city. It's mine. If I don't destroy the collider, none of us will have a home to go home to. Remember, what makes you different... Let's go! ...is what makes you Spider-Man. You guys are a well-established uh, double act at this stage. What do you argue about in, in, in during the creative process? What, what is the friction between the two of you, would you say? Or is there any? Oh, there's, there's always never any friction. <laughs> I mean, there's. this was a movie that, you know, had, um, you know, us and three directors, which was like a big teamwork job, which is not unlike the film itself. And a movie this ambitious sort of needed a lot of really strong creative voices. But there was always a lot of um, discussion and disagreements along the way. But luckily, we all had the same vision for what we wanted the movie to feel like and be about, what we wanted it to look like. And that's why I think it ended up uh, feeling cohesive. Um, but I think. Every day, you know, there was debates about, oh, I think it should be this, but we need to cut this beat, and... and uh, we I want everything to be longer. Yeah. And you want everything <laughs> to be shorter. <laughs> and we meet in the middle. That's it. <laughs> Excellent. Of, of course, uh, Mr. Stanley passed away only yeah. a couple of weeks ago at this stage. Can you tell us what he meant to you, really? Well, you know, from when we were kids, he was communicating with us uh, in the form of the, his writing and his letters to fans and they always had a lot of exclamation points and they were enthusiastic and really welcoming and, and empowering so you know and he was really funny so the, the idea that like you could write in that way that was really inspirational really funny and really inclusive you know he 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 created a community for us uh, when we were very young and we wanted to just pass the baton and, you know, and try to continue that legacy with this picture. And, and, and uh, you know, and that's why we sort of wanted to give him a cameo that wasn't just a, a, a an aside moment at a random spot, but a, a place that has some actual emotional weight to it, and as well as being inspiring and and funny. And so, um, we wanted to honor his legacy when we were when we were making it. And now, obviously, after his passing, it's added a whole new level of poignancy, but it feels still inspirational to me. Finally, uh, w will there be more? Will we be seeing more of the, the Spider-Verse? <laughs> we sure opened the door for that to happen. <laughs> um, you know, for infinity sequels. <laughs> exactly. It's a multiverse, <laughs> after all. But, uh, you know, hopefully audiences will, uh, will uh, love it as much as we do and, and clamor for more because um, we think the possibilities are really, really endless. Officer, I love you. <laughs> Wait, what? 
Do animals talk in this dimension? Because I don't want to freak them out. <laughs>